Hey y'all, this is Mike from Retirement Train Straight Talk, where I give you the simple truth every day in every video from my perspective. All right, well, Mama's and I are down here after having lunch or dinner here. I just say late lunch after a doctor's appointment, early dinner. Um, at this place called La Cantera Mall, it's, it's an outside area. Those of you familiar with San Antonio area, you know what this is. Um, kind of bougie place, a couple hundred stores are outside real nice the weather's real nice today 75 or so a little cool so i'm wearing this sweater in the shade um good things going on down here a lot of folks are out here enjoying themselves and the weather they got open bars and all that kind of stuff they have this place called the well tommy bahamas bar that i'm sitting next to so you hear music in the background well that's the deal all right what is there to talk about today you saw my last video um you know, America's probably still the greatest place in the world to live. Some of you might dispute that, but uh, I'll probably dispute your dispute. That being said, what's today's video should, and I'm going to probably get into some area that I normally don't like to get into, and that's politics, y'all. Um, but you know what? It's my channel. I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, what do I have to lose, so to speak? So, you've all known for a while now that I'm a staunch Republican. It's not just because of the Republican label name. And I think some people are confused by that. That the days of, for instance, the days of Reagan's are gone. The days of the Kennedy's is gone. So you got to take it as it comes. For instance, what I like to do, and in all fairness, it's what I do. Even though I'm a Republican, um, by, by theme, I should say, meaning there's certain... Um, core beliefs I believe in. And so I make a list on two sides, right? Republican, Democrat. What's important to me? And I'm not sure what's important to you, but these are the things that are important to me. Okay? The economy, number one. Where are we at? The border issue right now. The immigration crisis. Some of you might not think it is, but it is a crisis. It's an invasion. Like it or not. When you have that many people coming over your border at one time, has it curtailed some? Sure, a little bit, but we get, we got people coming that we don't even know about. So immigration number two, economy is number one, immigration is number two. What should be number three? In my opinion, and that will be a, a number of things in no significant order, right? Um, crime in our nation, where are we at with that, right? Supreme Court issues, abortion, all those sorts of things. That's on both sides now. So I take it like that. I make two lists and I tell myself, where do you stand on each one of these and which candidate fits your core values the best? And that's what I base it on. Now, if it was the other way around and I liked the Democratic nominee in the sense of where she stands on things, vice where Trump stands on things, would I pick her? That's the big question. The answer is probably not, but I'd take a second look. Okay? I would. I would take a second look because I'm not against anybody who has good ideas. But, you know, I'm, I'm just not. I don't think Vance, J.D. Vance, was always a Republican. I don't. But I like what he stands for now, if what he's saying is true. And you just don't know. There's not enough experience there. But he's on the ticket. I like Vance. And I'm looking further on, by the way. I'm looking past Trump. Trump's got a big mouth. I get it. He's his own man. Was the country better off prior to Trump? Excuse me. Uh, prior to Biden. Right? Four years ago. You ask yourself that question. Was, was inflation lower? Trump left the office with, what, 1.4% inflation rate? It jumped up when a Biden took office to 8.3 or whatever it was, right? It's simple. I mean, those are facts, okay? Now, there's some things that can be disputed on Trump's record, sure. But at least with Trump, he tried to do everything he said he was going to do. Right or wrong, um, maybe the delivery wasn't great, or maybe he wasn't a great fit. But at least he tried. 
in my view. So I'm voting for Donald Trump if you haven't noticed that yet. Like him or not, I'm looking at the future. I'm looking at the next generation, possibly Vance or whomever, right? I'm definitely looking at that. So that's just my view on it. Take it or leave it. It's your choice. If you like what you hear today, think about subscribing to my channel. The algorithm gets around and other folks can get in there and do it. It takes a takes a different type of person to do what I'm doing. A lot of folks who, who need the income <clears throat> and want to have a strong YouTube channel don't do what I do. They don't mix around like this. They don't go from a retirement channel to a political vibe channel. I'm not doing that. I'm stating my mind. It's about my retirement. And if y'all don't think this affects your retirement, the election, I think you got another thing coming and think a little bit more about it because I think it does. I think it has somewhat to do with your retirement, especially policies that that can influence you. For instance, if I was in the federal government right now and I knew that Trump was going to pick someone like Elon Musk to be an advisor to look at how the government's wasting money. I might look into that and think, well, are we? Am I doing it? Am I in that role? Um, am, am I on the government roles? In another, in other words, am I working for the government? And uh, you might think about how you're doing business, and government agencies will shed money back. It's just the way it is. Elon Musk very efficient in that way. A lot of folks who have been, you know, working from home forever, and um, not I'm against, not that I'm against working from home, but all the time, I think that will change. I think the VA stuff will change. How can we make the, the uh, Veterans Administration a little bit more smooth? That needs a lot of work, doesn't it? You got people killing themselves in the parking lot due to depression, PTSD. All those things matter. So I think efficiency in the government is going to be number one. I, I don't think anybody can dispute that. There are needed efficiencies in the government, right? So Elon Musk, I think, would be a good fit. Um, in some sort of fashion within the government system under Trump's administration, either as an advisor. I'm not sure he's going to be a cabinet person, but something like that. J.D. Vance is very good at what he does in the sense of um, he can definitely demonstrate that he can put together two sentences for sure. Was he always with Trump? No. But there's a lot of things in my life that I've changed my mind on. And sure, you have too. So when you go out there, and if you haven't voted yet, think about how it's going to affect you. Because a lot of folks do this. They say one thing until they get into that voting booth with the curtain closed. Then they vote with their wallet. How were you affected four years ago? Are you better off today? Are you, do you hate Trump that much looking beyond what he can do for the country as it stands right now? I don't know about you, but I know this. I've been around the government a long time. And so I ask myself, why are all these Chinese allowed to come to America? That dictator doesn't let anybody leave that country, except for a reason. Are they in here as being plants for the future? We've proved it happened in the Philippines. We've proved it happened in other places in Asia. But these things do happen. And China's really good at that. They plant people as young children or, you know, military age people in there to get a, f a, f a foot in the door, get established, know the culture, learn the language. And then we have a problem. So think about that. You have all these other dictators and presidents open up their jails and let people out coming to America. You have drug runners running these, these mules running these people to these countries for a fee. You have fentanyl coming over the border, killing Americans. I personally don't know why somebody wasn't actually fired for it. I don't know. Orcas and all those people like that that run that organization, I'm not sure why. I have an idea why. I think it's all about votes. I do. I can remember when President Biden first took office. He opened our borders to everybody. Y'all welcome to come. Okay, 
No vetting. I've got family members who've been waiting 10, 15 years, my wife's family, I should say, to come to America the right way, standing in line, so to speak, right? Filling out the paperwork, getting the physical, answering their questions, getting vetted, still not here. I got one coming, hopefully soon, to Hawaii. Not there yet. Backlog. But then they see these people across the Mexican border or what have you through Canada that way, illegally, by the way, allowed to be here saying you just you just got to report at a later date. What does that mean? How do you know? You can't cross reference them because there's no records for them. You don't know what you're getting at one time. Now, I can dwell on that for hours, that being said, and, and those of you who know what I'm talking about, you could too. But there's other things that bother me about the administration, right? How weak we are, or presentedly weak, across the ocean. What do you think, you know, these wars are dealing with right now? We're, we're sending money to Ukraine, okay? We're sending money to Israel for, for good cause. None, I get all that. But we have disaster areas here happening. And it's not scuttlebutt, it's a fact. We have rerouted some money to pay for these um, disaster areas through FEMA from the VA Veterans Administration. I got a problem with that. Those sorts of things bother me. So if things like that bother you, you got to vote your conscience. But at the end of the day, you're going to go in that booth and you're going to vote whatever those check marks are for you and what's important for you. And I'm not turning anybody's mind over to, to, to my side of you. You vote how you need to vote. But just be cautious and understand that it's your responsibility as, as a U.S. citizen to vote. Because then you can't complain about what happens in the future, can you? It's up to you. We put that person in office. No matter how you look at it, right? Even though it's not the popular vote. And, it's, and that's for good reason. The founding fathers thought that would be best. If that was the case, you'd only have California and New York. Done deal. Wouldn't be fair for the rest of the country. So, like our colleges and those folks, it was designed that way. So it would be a fair election. So, that's my view on it. I'm sticking to it. Uh, I hope I didn't turn anybody off that much. But just keep that in the back of your mind. That's important to vote on. Well, this has been Mike from the Retirement Train. Y'all take care and God bless.